thanks, Jody. All right, so I'm going to start with a song. <laughs> so much thank you so uh i'm robin o'heron just in case you didn't know <laughs> and i'm here to talk with you guys about the harlem renaissance i'm really excited about this so uh i'm gonna share my screen i'm gonna go back and forth between sharing my screen because i actually have a slide presentation for you guys so uh so yeah, this is about the blues and the poetry of the Harlem Renaissance featuring the poetry of Langston Hughes. So um, 
the Harlem Renaissance was an intellectual, social, artistic explosion that took place in Harlem, New York from, a, from about 1918 through 1937. It, uh, it was a blossoming of African-American culture, particularly in the cre creative arts. And it was the most influential movement in African-American history. Uh, and so the things that exploded <laughs> were literature, music, dance, and fine art. And, um, and the performing arts were such an integral part of the Harlem Renaissance. The blues permeated the poetry and art of this period. Blues music was already played in juke joints throughout the South. And, um, and it reached a broader audience in vaudeville, which overlapped with the Harlem Renaissance. And, um, and then became uh, part of and an influencer of the Harlem Renaissance. So in 1923, Bessie Smith recorded her debut album. Uh, and she was, you know, they didn't have microphones. So she was like the queen of shout blues. When I first started learning how to sing blues, uh, I thought you had to shout everything because I didn't, because that's how I learned from Bessie Smith, from listening to her. But um, so her debut album, Downhearted Blues, was released in 1923 with Columbia Records and sold over 800,000 copies uh, of both Gulf Coast Blues and Downhearted Blues. And um, I'm going to play you, I'm going to stop the share, and I'm going to play you um, uh, a song that Bessie Smith did. Um, it, it was written by Pam Carter, but, but uh, it's, she, this is one of my favorites that she did, maybe a lesser known one called Weeping Willow Blues. Down to the river, sat beneath that willow tree. Two drops from those willow leaves, Lord, let them roll right over me. And that's the reason I got the weeping willow.
Bessie Smith. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to the slide presentation. And so um, these are some of the movers and shakers in the Harlem Renaissance. Of course, us in the Berkshires, we know about W.E.B. Du Bois, born in, on February 23rd, 1868, in Great Barrington. He was uh, one of the most important African-American activists during the first half of the 20th century. He founded the NAACP. He supported Pan-Africanism. Um, Langston Hughes, who is, uh, we're going to focus on during this presentation, he was born February 1st, 1902. He was an American poet, novelist, and playwright whose African-American themes made him a primary contributor to uh, the Harlem Renaissance in the 20s. And, and um, yeah, and the blues had a great impact on his writing. We'll talk more about that. Um, Aaron Douglas, he is the most celebrated artist, often called the father of Black American art. He adapted African techniques to realize paintings and murals, as well as doing book illustration. Um, Paul Robeson, the cultural boom in Harlem gave black actors opportunities for stage work that they had previously been uh, denied. Because uh, usually if they appeared on stage, it was in a minstrel show, musical, ra rarely in a serious non-stereotype role. And he broke through that barrier. He was an actor, singer, writer, uh, activist, and more. He was amazing. So you can, uh, you know, when you, I don't know if these are actual links about these people. So if you watch the recording of this, when we're on the slideshow, you might be able to just click on the link to learn more about these people. Louis Armstrong, the father of the backbeat, that's what I call him, because if the backbeat was a rocking chair, Louis Armstrong rocked so far back he would have fallen over. He was just amazing with the backbeat. And the music that percolated in Harlem in the 20s was mostly jazz. There was some blue and blues, but um, it was often played at speakeasies, offering illegal booze. It became a great draw, not only for the residents of Harlem, but also white audiences that came to hear it. Some of the most celebrated names in American music regularly performed in Harlem, like Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, Bessie Smith, Fats Waller, Cab Calloway, and they often had really elaborate floor shows. Um, and then there were uh, tap dancers like Bill Bojangles Robinson. Now, um, and I just want to say, you know, I am, I have gotten a lot of education about tap dancers because I'm in a duo with a tap dancer. We're called uh, Tap and Blues because we haven't come up with a better name after all of these years. <laughs> but um, she's taught me a lot. And Bill Bo and Bojangles, you know, there's a song from the 60s uh mr bojangles i don't know i want to play a little bit of it for you guys because um because it's all about him it's about his life and he was an iconic african-american tap dancer best known for his broadway performances and film uh roles and i'm just gonna stop the share for a minute and uh and play you a little bit of mr now this is not a blues song but but it's about a, a really important dancer from the Harlem Renaissance. So, uh... Old 
soft shoe He jumped so high Jumped so high Then he lightly touched down Mr. give you a taste of that. So I'm going to go back to sharing the screen. Put this down. So what is the blues? That is what we're going to look at before we get into uh, before we get into uh, blues and poetry. So uh, Sunhouse said, the blues ain't nothing but a good man feeling bad. And Reverend Gary Davis said, tell the truth. And here's another Sunhouse quote. Um, People keep asking me where the blues got started and all I can say is that when I was a boy, we was always singing in the fields. Not real singing, you know, more like hollering. But we made up songs about things that happened to us at the time. And I think that's where the blues started. That's Sunhouse. And I think he, you know, I think that's true. The blues is all about things that happened and how people felt about it. The, the genre... The blues form possesses other characteristics, such as very specific lyrics, bass lines, certain instruments. It can be subdivided into lots of different genres, from country blues to city blues. Uh, that were uh, the, we're going to focus mostly on Delta and Piedmont blues, which are what I specialize in. But there's jump blues, there's Chicago blues. World War II marked the transition from acoustic to electric blues as people migrated up into the cities and, um, and blues hit a wider audience. And then in the 60s and 70s, uh, rock blues evolved. So, you know, I think personally, I think all that all American popular music grew out of the blues. And um, so the term blues refers to blue devils, which uh, the term was first used in, in 
It's recorded as being used in 1798. It means uh, melancholy, being overcome by melancholy and sadness. And uh, in African and music, African American music, it has been attested to since 1912, although it was probably used earlier. It was used in uh, Dallas Blues, became the first copyrighted blues composition. And um, so even though the blues is about sadness, there are happy blues and expressing sadness oftentimes releases it so that you feel a lot better. I'm just saying that's what I've found to be true. Um, so I'm going to just show you a couple of examples of, of both Delta and Piedmont blues, short examples. And um, this is a little sample of the of Delta Blues. <laughs> to stop the share sorry about that um that's that's a sample of the delta and i know my two students that are here will appreciate this so i'm going to show you a, a sample of uh, piedmont blues so piedmont blues has a steady solid alternating bass line and a melody line so So that's uh, Piedmont Blues. That's a sample of Piedmont Blues. Um, I notice there are some questions in the uh, in the chat. I can't really look at the chat while I'm doing all of this, but there will be a time at the end where you can actually ask questions if you want to. And if I know the answers, I will tell you them. Okay. So, um, all right. Back to the screen share. This is this is what I call. Uh, fundamental rules about the blues. So a good way to start a blues song is I woke up this morning. And that's always a good thing when you actually wake up. Got a good woman is a bad way to start a blues song unless she's the nastiest woman in town. If you stuck in a ditch, you stuck in a ditch. No way out. Blues don't travel in BMWs, Volvos or sports utility vehicles. Um, usually they're Chevys or 
pickup trucks, uh, Fords, Cadillacs, um, yeah, or actually Greyhound buses are also really good blues vehicles. Um, teens usually can't sing the blues because they ain't fixing to die. Uh, and um, good grammar is not part of uh, is not part of uh, blues songs. You can't say uh, you can't say I am now fixing to die. It's more like as fixing to die. So um, right, adult uh, the re adulthood means being old enough to get the electric chair for shooting a man in Memphis. Therefore, you can sing the blues. <laughs> Just say, and I know uh, there's a couple of, uh, I've met a couple of like teen blues prodigies that are amazing. And I've actually seen older blues players go up to them and say, what have you experienced? How do you, why do you think you could sing this music? You know, they're like, I don't know. <laughs> but, but yeah. The blues is based on a lot of experience. So anyway, just letting you know, gospel music, to me, blues and gospel are flip sides of the same coin. I don't think you can separate them. It's the sacred counterpoint of blues and jazz. And Thomas A. Dorsey, not the band leader, uh, he's known as the father of gospel music. So he started out he was a honky-tonk piano player he called himself georgia tom and he toured the south and he had an encounter with god and uh turned his life around and he said why should the devil have all the good music so he founded this academy of gospel music to actually teach people how to play gospel music and um and he wrote this the song Precious Lord. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that song. It's a amazing song. I've been trying to decide which song I would show you as a sample of uh, gospel music, but I guess maybe I'll do Precious Lord because Precious Lord was also Martin Luther King Jr.'s favorite gospel song. And Mahalia Jackson sing it for him. The story, uh, there's a story that goes with this. Um, so, so uh, he was on the road teaching people how to, how to play gospel music. And he was married, he had a wife and a young baby, and he got a telegram saying, come home. Um, they got sick and they both died. And he went home and he said, I'm never going to play gospel music again. That's it. I've had it with God and gospel music and the whole thing. And he, he sat down at his piano and what came out was this song. And, uh, you know, eventually he did marry again. He did teach hundreds and thousands of people how to play gospel music. I have a recording of him when he's like 90 years old playing this song. It's, it's just amazing. So this is a uh, precious Lord. But still I'm here 
Take my hand, precious Lord, and leave, leave me on, precious Lord, take my So now we're going to get into, we're going to get into um, poetic devices. <laughs> when I did this in a school, uh, I mentioned poetic de devices. I said, what, what do you guys know about poetic devices? And they said, my phone is a poetic device. <laughs> but that's not the kind of poetic devices I'm talking about. So, um, yeah. Let's look at this. So these are things that were used in poetry that are also used in blues music. Okay, so there is um, alliteration, which is the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of or adjacent or to closely connected words like she sells seashells at the seashore is very alliterative. Um, there's imagery, which is very visually descriptive or figurative language, often used in literary works. Um, metaphors. Now, uh, I, I don't necessarily agree with this definition that I put here of metaphors, but metaphors and similes. So a simile is a figure of speech where you compare one thing to another by using like or as. Um, Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. But if you take out the like or as and say, sometimes I am a motherless child, that's a metaphor. So um, that's the best way I can describe it. Then there's personification, where you 
uh, attribute human attributes or nature, human characteristics to something non-human. Uh, like in um, Walk in Blues, it says dark gone down boys. I mean, sun gone down boys, dark don't catch me here. And like it's giving a personal ad person attributes to dark to the dark. Um, paradox is a statement that, uh, despite apparently sound reasoning, leads to a conclusion that seems senseless, logically unacceptable, or self contradictory. Like, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. Uh, rhyme, which is used a lot. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed that in the songs we've done so far. Uh, corresponding sound between words or ending of words. There can be multiple rhymes in a sentence even. Uh, here's a line from a, a blues. I had religion this day, but the whiskey and women would not let me pray. So it's person, it's whiskey is personified, and and then there's a rhyme at the end, um, and repetition is really important with blues songs. Some blues songs, the entire verse is just repeating one line. So, and then there's hyperbole, which is uh, exaggeration. It's like exaggeration. Um, so, so uh, I'm looking at, I'm just looking, so here's a, so here's another example of uh, personification. I hear the delta calling by the light of a distant star, and that's also imagery. Um, I woke up this morning with the blues all around my bed, that's personification and metaphor. Uh, so there's there's a lot of 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 that and and I want you to in the songs I am doing and have done I want you to listen for these poetic devices and you're going to hear them in the poetry that we're going to read. Um, so here's some more yeah here's here's some examples of uh, different poetic devices. Um, so now we're up to the blues in Langston Hughes. So his family struggled out of poetry, out of poverty, and he could identify and appreciate poor struggling African Americans who also were able to overcome their economic circumstances, which is what he did. He loved African American music because it reflected those struggles. And, and he traveled all over the country listening to it. In 1927, he traveled through the South with a friend of his who was also an author, Zora Neale Hurston, and she collected and recorded songs. At that time, there was a lot of people, there were a lot of song collectors gathering um, seminal music that wouldn't have been saved any other way. And so he, he saw firsthand the connection between the written and the spoken word. And um, his, his work honors blues singers. It honors uh, the venues that they played in, their instruments, and it addresses the suffering of African Americans. And it incorporates the rhythm and the music of the blues. So um, I'm going to play another blues song, and then I'm going to ask for a volunteer to read a blues fantasy. So um, you can raise your hand, or you can unmute, and uh, yeah, you can you can let me know, okay? This is a this is a song called um, called Leaving Trunk. I uh, I learned this song just because of the line in it. There's one 
verse it says i didn't need no whiskey because the blues made me sloppy drunk i love that line <laughs> free is there anyone who would like to read blues fantasy uh, you can raise a hand or unmute I, I think you all got copies of the poems right yeah okay. so who's who's that talking I can't see everyone maybe I'll go to I'll uh, change my view right now Okay, now I can see everybody. So who, any, any volunteers, any brave souls? Beth. I'll do it. Okay, go for it. I'll do my best. Okay. All right. All right, here we go. Hey, hey, that's what the blues singers say, singing minor melodies, they laugh. Hey, hey, my man's done left me, child, he's gone away. My good man's left me. Babe, he's gone away. Now the crying blues haunts me night and day. Hey, hey, weary, weary, trouble, pain. Sun's gonna shine somewhere again. I got a railroad ticket, pack my trunk and ride. Sing him, sister. Got a railroad tricker, ticket, pack my trunk and ride. And when I get on the train, I'll cast my blues aside. Laughing, hey, hey, laugh aloud. Hey, hey. <laughs> Good job. Good job. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, yeah. So you can see, I mean, it sounds to me just like a blues song, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's it's pretty amazing. Uh, it has gonna, a rhythm. Um, huh? It, it has, has a, a rhythm. Yeah. yeah. It has the rhythm. It has the the phrasing, everything about it. So I, um, I'm just gonna retune here. Uh, um, 
um, I'm gonna play I'm gonna play a blues tune that kind of uh, has some of the things mentioned in that poem. I mean, leaving trunk. It did talk about packing your trunk and leaving. So this is uh, this is big road blues. Here to read uh, Weary Blues. Anybody like to read Weary Blues? That's such a good one. Don't be shy. No? Wow, you guys. Hey, since Beth did it, I will do it. Yay, Jude. All right. Go for it. It's really long. Okay. <laughs> it is. Droning a drowsy syncopated tune, rocking back and forth to a mellow croon. I heard a Negro play down on Lennox Avenue the other night. By the pale, dull pallor of an old gas light, he did a lazy sway. He did a lazy sway to the tune of those weary blues. With his ebony hands on each ivory key, he made that poor piano moan with melody, oh blues. Swaying to and fro on his rickety stool, he played that sad raggy tune like a musical fool. Sweet blues, coming from a black man's soul, oh blues. In a deep song voice with a melancholy tone, I heard that Negro sing, that old piano moan. Ain't got nobody in all this world. Ain't got nobody but myself. I was gonna quit my frowning and put my troubles on the shelf. Thump, 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 went his foot on the floor. He played a few chords, then he sang some more. I got the weary blues, but I can't be satisfied. Got the weary blues and can't be satisfied. I ain't happy no more. 
and I wish that I had died. And far into the night, he crooned that tune. The stars went out, and so did the moon. The singer stopped playing and went to bed, while the weary blues echoed through his head. He slept like a rock or a man that's dead. Good job. Good job. That was great. I'm going to, uh, that reminds me of a, um, reminds me of, uh, a song, um, this is Trouble in Mind. This is one of my favorite tunes. talk about my guitars I'm actually multitasking here <laughs> so um, this is a resonator guitar uh, resonator guitars were invented in the 20s they they had bands and the bands were playing and um, no one could hear the guitar player over the piano and the horns and the bass and 
they couldn't amplify them. So they invented, it was a, such a creative time. So they made these guitars all out of metal. This part in the middle here, they used hubcaps. The whole guitar was a resonator, right? So, so that's what they called them. And the, um, the first company was the National Steel Resophonic Resonator Guitar Company. They went out of business in the late 30s and they sold all their, uh, um, guide, what do you call it? They sold all, all their guides for how to make these to the Dobrowski brothers who made Dobros and to Martin and Martin Guitar who also made resonators. And then this company reopened in the 60s. This is a 2005 National Steel Radio Tone Bendaway Resonator Guitar. So they're still around and they do great work. Um, and that's this guitar. I, this other guitar that I've been playing is very amazing. So a few years ago, in the wintertime, I fell on the ice and then I slammed a heavy metal door on my thumb and I broke my thumb in two places. They could, doctors couldn't do anything about it and I couldn't play a, a guitar with a regular width neck to do finger style playing. And one of my fans, um, Matthew Silliman, uh, was a budding luthier and he built me a guitar just for the price of materials. And this is it, it has the smallest neck in the world. And um, I love this guitar, I'm so grateful to him. Uh, if you, I don't know, he ha I don't know how many, this, is, this was the second guitar he ever built. So it was pretty amazing. It was an amazing process to watch and be part of. And, um, and that's the story of my guitars. So let's go back to uh, gallery view. I want to see everybody. Would anyone like to read um, Po' Boy Blues? And then, and then we'll open it up to more questions if you, if you like. Sure, I'll do it. Okay, Marie. It's Marie. Yes, go ahead. When I was home, the sunshine seemed like gold. When I was home, the sunshine seemed like gold. Since I come up north, the whole damn world's turned cold. I was a good boy, never done no wrong. Yes, I was a good boy, never done no wrong. But this world is weary, and the road is hard and long. I fell in love with a gal I thought was kind. Fell in love with a gal I thought was kind. She made me lose my money and almost lose my mind. Weary, weary, weary early in the morn. Weary, weary, early in the morn. I so weary, I wish I'd never been born. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Um, I could do one more tune if you want, or we could just open up to questions. What would you guys like to do? Anyone have an opinion? One more tune. A tune, more, a tune. T okay, okay. So uh, this, uh, Poor Boy Blues makes me think of this song and um, it's a Skip James tune and literally he, uh, he moved up north um, and lived in New York City. It's really interesting. He he only wrote one happy song. He wrote, "I'm so glad. I'm glad. I'm uh, the, the cream cream covered it." Um, but that's the only happy song he wrote. And he uh, he had some health issues. He was really unhappy in New York City. It was cold, and he was miserable. But he stayed. Ah. So this is called Cypress Grove. Uh...
buried six feet in the clay. Thank you so much. I keep forgetting to put myself in the middle when I play, but so that's pretty much it. Does anyone have any comments or questions or love to hear your thoughts? Robin, where did you study music? What is your musical background? <laughs> um, I, I took old records in the 60s and slowed them down by pushing my finger on the record needle. Okay. I had six months of guitar that my mom gave me. But then uh, I want to say I'm not in 2002, I started deciding that I wanted to seriously do this. I, I was an art director. And I went to um, a time management seminar and they said, what are you going to, when you're 90 years old and you're sitting in a rocking chair, what are you going to look back and say, oh, no, I didn't do that. And I thought, oh, no, I forgot to be a blues singer. Within six months, I had gotten laid off of my job and released my first CD. Oh. And then I realized that I needed lessons. <laughs> So I, um, for two years, I, I designed and maintained a website for a company that had weekend workshops with blues masters. And I got to go to every workshop for free. And uh, that was, that's about my, um, and then I realized I needed to learn how to sing. So I found a really good teacher and took a lot of singing lessons, but I don't have, you know, the, the blues masters, they couldn't read music. They couldn't, and actually, um, I mean, the kind of music that I play, there's crooked time. The thing about early blues, they would hang on, you know, like four, four time, you go one, two, three, four, and that's a measure. But in early blues, 
if they weren't done expressing themselves in that measure, that measure could be six beats or eight beats or maybe three beats, but it was crooked time because it was all based on how they felt. And one of my teachers was like uh, an incredible jazz musician and he had gone to Juilliard school and he had to forget everything he learned to learn this music. And I have told my, I have two students here and they will testify it's hard to get off the page and integrate music into your body, but that's what makes the difference. And so, you know, I, I would have to say, I don't have a lot of formal training, but I've learned how to integrate this music into my body. And, and uh, that's what's important to me is, is, being, uh, is the honesty of it, as well as the skill level, which I'm a little rusty because, you know, I had COVID, I was in bed for 88 days and um, I was really sick. And then, you know, I stopped playing. I've only started playing. It's been, it was over a year and I didn't even pick up my guitars. So this is, I haven't done a whole lot. You guys are like the, only the second real thing I've actually done. And the first real blues thing I've actually done in a year and a half. So I'm really grateful to be here and I'm grateful to you for listening. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Does that answer the question? Thank you. Yes. And do you play other instruments besides I, the guitars? Um, I play slide guitar, finger style guitar, mountain dulcimer and okay. uh, ukulele and i teach ukulele i teach it after school programs to little kids i and adults i and and joe here is um my assistant when we get to do live teaching and i taught him how to play so he could be the assistant <laughs> I, I i in fact i'm working on a program with uh a traditional musician it's called the melting pot of american music and we're covering the whole history of american music and there's a lot of dulcimer and banjo and all different kinds of instruments in that um i have a beautiful piano my mom gave me but i haven't played piano in years and hopefully i'll pick it up again i teach songwriting and uh yeah i didn't play you any of my original stuff interesting but uh yes and i teach uh singing also any anybody anybody else have any did you notice the repetitiveness and the rhyme and how so oh i know what i forgot oh my gosh i can't believe i forgot this the very last slide it was like okay hopefully i've inspired you and now if you will come back in two weeks um, I want you to write either a poem based on this genre of poetry or a blues song. And now I sent a track of, of uh, a guitar track that you could use if you don't play an instrument. So I'm just going to show you. This is the track, right? It's very simple, but I'm gonna. So, so if you're writing a song, um, okay, I'm gonna stop. I, you, you just so the first measure. I'm gonna do Karina, I think. Karina, Karina, where you been so I 
I got a bird that sings. Mm -hmm. I got a see how it repeats bird that whistles. I got a bird that sings. Yes, I. So, so how simple is that? There's two lines that repeat, a third line that kind of ties it together and then ends in a rhyme. That is a basic structure. I, I should, I'm going to share my screen one more time. I just want to show you. Um, whoops, I shared the wrong thing. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> okay, here we are. Um, okay, so the first measure the, is the one chord, okay, basic music theory, the one, this is a one, four, five blues. Blues has a small alpha, music has a small alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and, and then it starts over again. The one chord in this is an E, and then you just count to four, E, F, G, a is the four chord, okay? So the one, so the first measure is the one chord. This is this one is I'm gonna dust my broom. I believe I'll get up in the morning. The second measure is the four chord, and I believe I'll dust my broom. And then you repeat that. Whoops. Um, and then you repeat that whole thing. I'm gonna get up in the morning. Four beats, and I believe I'll dust my broom. Third bar chord. I'm out with the best girl on gal I'm loving. Fourth bar chord. Now my friends can get my room. Okay. So uh, yeah. So now I want you to create. Actually, you could do a dance. You could create a piece of art. I would just love to see you guys do something like that. Um, so so it's really simple, and I. I have made available this basic progression. I mean, if you're a musician, you can create your own, but if you're not and you're stuck, um, Jody from the library will send you this so that you can create. And if you want to, if you come back, I can play for you and you can read it or you can, you can, uh, put it in the chat and I will sing it for you. So um, either way, I, and you know, I've done this um, with, I've done this with college students, high school students, grade school students, fifth graders wrote amazing songs about how much they hate homework. They really, and um, you know, it, it doesn't have to, it's, it's like we talked about in the beginning. It's about whatever's going on in your life. I mean, right now we're going through a pandemic, so there's a lot to sing the blues. Of. I actually wrote a blues song about, uh, instead of Karina, it was Corona, Corona, you've been here way too long. <laughs> but uh, maybe I'll play it for you next week or, or when we get together again in two weeks, I, I should say. So um, yeah. But, but I would love it if you guys would uh, think about, you know, taking a chance and writing a song. It, it's so, uh, well, first of all, it's a great cure for anxiety because when you focus on something, it, it, it causes you to have a little bit of peace that you might not have had because you have to concentrate. Concentration is a great cure for anxiety. Uh, that's why like coloring or cooking or painting, they're all really good cures for anxiety. But, um, and it's an amazing sense of accomplishment and it's, a, and it's an expression of who you are. You know, even the simplest kind of songs, even the silliest songs are expressions of who you are that you get to share with people. So I'd really love to, and in just a little 
short promo. In June and July, I'm doing a four-week songwriting uh, course with, through the a grant that I got through the Monterey um, Cultural Council, and it's going to be on Zoom, and we're going to write songs like crazy. It's going to be really fun. But I really encourage you guys. Um, I hope that you come back on the I think it's the 30th, right? And and that you uh, work on writing a song. It doesn't have to be, you know, uh, doesn't have to be a masterpiece. It just has to be how you feel. So um, basically, that's all I have to say. Is there anything else anybody wants to ask or that you'd like to, to add? Marie, um, can I bounce this off for you? You're just talking. I'm just writing. So um, let me know what you think. I, I can take the criticism. Uh, going down the road to see my baby there. Going down the road. Oh, wait a minute. So going, down, uh, going down the road. See my baby there. She's my honey. Oh, so fair. Yeah, she's so fair. Makes my heart flutter. Goes pitter pat. Makes my heart flutter, goes pitter pat. She's my honey, oh so fair. Love her dearly, for me she cares. Love her dearly, for me she cares. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Good job. <laughs> well, now you have to write another one. <laughs> I, I will. I will. I'll add it to my list. I've been doing the uh, word by word, thirty by thirty for Poetry Month. Oh, nice. And then. The Rojan Library is also doing one, so I'll I'll add a song a week, maybe. We'll see how it goes. Oh, cool. But along this style, so it's good. And Langston Hughes was a good one too, um, yeah, to hear about. He's a, he's a favorite Hughes. of mine. So great, thank you. Oh, Very well, enjoyable thank you, evening. Everyone. Thank you so much. And I um I don't know if Jody's still yeah Jody there you are. So I'm I, still I guess here. Yeah. I think that's it. I think you know we covered it pretty is. much everything. I hope. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and it was a pleasure for me to be here with you. Um, was the Carter who wrote this song related to the famous Carter family? I don't know what song that question related to. I that not... was the uh, Weeping Willow Blues, and he is not part of the Carter family. No, not at all. Paul Carter is African-American, and yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Good. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for answering that. All right, I think yeah. that I but think. Thank um, you, everyone. Yeah. I Robin, hope you enjoyed it. You so I had a blast thank being here with you. you. Very nice. Thank you, Robin. Thanks, Joe. So nice you guys job. have a great night. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you too. Yeah. I can't. It was great to see you, Jude and Beth. Yeah. Good to see you too. Thank you. It was uh, awesome. Okay. You guys take care. Be I safe. <laughs> Oh, great. That's right. Yes, it's two two weeks. I forgot about two that. Weeks, no. Two weeks. Yes. Two weeks. Yes. Okay. See, Perfect. Be here. Okay. okay. Bye. 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 Bye.